well, what should I say? Sometimes things just don't go as planned. And actually, this video was meant to be different. So I tried to do 6950x die shots. If you remember my Threadripper examination video, you remember that I took apart a Threadripper CPU, I took off the dies and essentially grinded down the dies so we could see the transistors themselves and the individual cores. I wanted to do the same thing with an i7-6950X Broadwell E-chip. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. So I started off pretty similar to my Threadripper video. I first took a heating plate and on the heating plate I put a small but still quite solid and flat piece of copper. The piece of copper was meant as heat buffer and also as a flat area so I can have a proper contact between the CPU and the heat source. And then I heated up the copper block to around 330-340 degrees Celsius and I started putting on the CPU to the heated block. So after two or three minutes I still saw that nothing really happened so I increased the temperature to around 420 degrees Celsius and then I started to hear some cracking inside the CPU and I could also see some bubbles coming up from the PCB itself which is usually due to some humidity that is still inside the PCB and once you heat it up you get those bubbles that's essentially cracking the PCB from the inside. But even at 400 degrees Celsius, I could not just take off the die from the package. And the reason for that is the underfill that is keeping the CPU die in place. is basically covering all the edges of the die. So I started to increase the temperature to around 440 degrees Celsius, took some pliers and removed the CPU from the heating block and then tried to use a knife to cut off the underfill and it worked out quite okay. So I did the same uh, thing several times, put back the CPU on the heating block, took it off, started to scratch with the knife on the underfill and eventually I could remove most of the underfill from the CPU and the die without killing the die. So essentially put it again onto the heating source, took it back off and then I could um, use the knife to essentially take off the die from the package. And here you can see the die. So this is actually the back side or top side of the die, depends on the perspective. So here we can see the side of the die that is essentially connected to the package. And if we zoom in, we can also see all those small connection points like VGAs, but very, very, very small that are connecting the package to the die. And essentially it should be also like 2011 connections, same as what we have on the bottom side of the package itself. And with a bit of imagination, you can already um, estimate the position of the cores themselves. So we have some lines that are going uh, across the die and those lines are basically um, separating some of the specific areas of the die, such as the uncore area, the memory controller and the cores itself in the middle should be the L3 cache. Actually, we can compare that to a picture of the die itself that's got released by Intel. So you can see the middle area is the shared L3 cache surrounded by the individual cores and on the bottom is the memory controller and on top we have the uncore area. So that's a close up picture of the package. You can see the bottom PCB actually looks still quite okay. The top PCB is pretty much damaged. You can see it already has this darker color so it doesn't really look that well. And you can still see all those um, the residues from the underfill that is surrounding the die usually, the stuff that I removed with the knife. And also here, if we zoom in, we can see all those small bumps that are connecting the die to the package. So once I had the die removed, I started again grinding down the die because you have to remove the top gold and connection layers before you can start with the proper polishing and, polishing and grinding to expose the transistors and the cores. So after that, I decided to use some resin to cover the die and also to protect it because that is what was essentially shown in the tutorial by Fritzians Fritz, the German guy who essentially came up with this whole idea on a German forum. Actually, I will put the link to his YouTube channel into the description, you can check it out there. After about 24 hours, the resin was hard enough so I could peel off the foil from the bottom. Actually, I had the die connected with double-sided adhesive tape to some foil and then put epoxy on top. After hardening of epoxy or the resin, I took off the foil and then essentially I started grinding the die again. So now we are getting to the point where I actually failed. So I started grinding down the die again 
and I kept grinding and grinding and it's actually really really hard to know where to stop so you're going through a lot of different layers and well I obviously don't know exactly which layer I'm at is there still a layer underneath how does the layer underneath look is it looking better than the layer where I'm currently at another difficulty is the fact that the die is not 100% even so the die is a little bit bent which makes it really hard to grind it down because you're grinding down a lot on the edges but not into the center and you actually want to see everything that's in the center because there's a lot more to see obviously all the cores are in the center so i kept grinding and grinding and at a certain point suddenly the die cracked i'm not really sure why it cracked maybe because i applied too much pressure or something like this but i thought that the resin would actually protect the die from cracking so yeah after the die was cracked the, cry, the, the crack in the middle came up a little bit, so yeah, if, if I continued grinding, there was just not, nothing else to see and that was actually quite frustrating, especially keeping in mind what the price of this CPU is usually, so yeah. I wish I could show you more than just this uh, broken piece of silicon, there's not even any circuit I can still see, but yeah. You have to learn from your mistakes, I guess. And so I got in contact with Fritz and Fritz again, and I asked him why did I fail that hard and what was, what was my mistake and at which layer should I actually stop? And then he told me that he's currently actually using some acid for selective etching. And that sounded really, really interesting because he said, you basically have to remove the top connection layer, the gold and uh, copper layers, and then you can just use some selective uh, etching acid and you don't have to grind anymore and the result should be really really good. So I got me some glass etching cream, actually imported this stuff from the US, it was not available here in Germany. Got me some protection gear as well because the acid is actually really really bad. So if you get it on your skin or your eyes, yeah, you're not gonna have a good day. So I got me some gel in case I get it on my skin, I can basically protect myself from it. Got me some goggles for sure, I mean I have to protect my eyes from this stuff. Got me some acid resistant gloves as well, um, should work out. Got me some of those glass cups and essentially I will use the glass etching cream, put it inside here, mix it with a little bit of water and then put the chip inside the glass etching cream. The cup with the glass etching cream then goes into this ultrasonic cleaner and in here it should clean the chip in like 10 to 30 minutes and after that time and after that time we should see some very very good results and that's what we will do in, in the next video and we will use well probably the most high-end chip you can think of at the moment I will not tell yet which chip it will be basically one of my viewers sent a chip to me so I can try this very thankful for this opportunity thank you so yeah stay tuned stay tuned for the next video failed with the 6950X but I'm pretty sure the next video will be even better so if you have any kind of questions about this let me know in the comments otherwise enjoy the rest of your weekend and see you soon